Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be awkward dating moments. Well, I've got an email here from a guy. He lives in a small town, and he's dating several different women. And so he's pretty much convinced that at some point, he's going to be on a date with a girl, and he's going to run into somebody else that he's dating. And he says, has that ever happened to you, Corey? And if so, how would you handle it? And if it does happen to me, what do you suggest that I do? So I've had a similar situation, but I'll get to that in a minute. But I've got a quote that I wrote on this particular topic because this actually can work to your advantage when you're just casually, you know, maybe you've been out on a date you know, a couple of times with different women, and like, say you're out on a date with a girl, you've been out with her maybe two or three times, and then you run into a girl you've maybe been out with two or three times or once or twice or whatever. You're not her boyfriend. She's not your girlfriend in any of those circumstances. And those situations can tell you a lot about the self-esteem and the attitude of the women that you're dating. Women with a healthy self-esteem will have the attitude, ooh, I'm going to make them all mine. But women that are insecure and jealous will get fucking pissed off and butthurt and either walk away completely or give you a really hard time about it and try to make you feel guilty. And if you only been on a few dates with somebody and they're pulling that shit, it's like no way. Run like hell. Run like the fucking wind. Run, Forrest. Run. <laughs> so the quote says, scarcity creates value. When someone or something is scarce and unique, it usually becomes very valuable. When it comes to sex and romance, if you focus on being and becoming a great catch, you will make yourself a very valuable but scarce resource. When someone or something comes in a limited supply or with a limited time offer, other people will value what is limited even more than they normally would. Sellers who have multiple offers for what they are selling can get the best price and terms. The superior negotiating position in all of your personal and professional negotiations will always be to create a high demand and low supply for what you have to offer. Creating scarcity and competition for your time always works to your advantage. I mean, think about it. If you know you always have other options, several options, you're never going to take a bad, shitty fucking deal. Let me give you an exa- a real world example that's in the headlines right now. Obviously, many of you probably have heard of Donald Trump. He's running for president right now. But what's interesting is a couple of weeks ago, he basically got pissed off at the Fox News channel and said, screw you guys. I'm boycotting your channel. I'm not going back on your channel. And so he st- spent plenty of time on all the other networks and was doing no interviews on Fox. And at first, Fox is like, screw you. We don't need you. We don't like how you're talking to some of our anchors. So anyways, after about a week, you know, he goes on CNN or these other networks and what happened? They interrupt their coverage. Like if he's at a stadium with like 30,000 people, they interrupt their coverage and it's like unfiltered streaming of everything that he says right to the viewer without the filter of the media. And that's something that's unprecedented. I mean, it's literally, I mean, think about it. When, I mean, the, he has a, it's easier for Donald Trump to get free airtime than President Obama saying, I want to address the nation. I mean, it's, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. You know, you got, a lot of negotiating power when the network, when you're on and you're doing a speaking event, just interrupts their coverage and just lets you go on for a half hour, an hour and speak directly to their audience. It's another reason why he's dominating in the polls. And so what happens? Remember, the strongest negotiating position is always being able to walk away and mean it. And so anyways, it was like last week, week and a half ago, whatever it was, after a week of boycotting Fox, what you hear is Roger Ailes is going to go meet Trump and sit down with him. So obviously what happens? Trump doesn't go to Roger Ailes. He doesn't go to the guy who's running Fox. He makes the fucking dude come to him and sit in his office and say, okay, let's bury the hatchet. We really like you to come back on the network. Then the real reason, you want to know why? It's advertising. Because when he's on their network, their ratings are through the roof and they can sell a lot more advertising. They can charge a lot more for their commercials. It's the whole fucking reason why he is there. So 
and so what happens? The guy Roger Ailes goes, sits down with him on his terms, on his fucking turf. Remember, just a week and a half before, he's like, screw you. We don't need you. Go on the other networks. We don't care. The ratings go in the toilet. Hey, can we get together and talk about this? Maybe we can work something out. Win-win situation for everybody. So, of course, they get together behind closed doors. Roger Ailes goes with his tail between his legs. I mean, we're assuming this is what happens because what was reported last week was that Roger Ailes was going to go meet him. So, I was like, earlier, a couple earlier this week, he finally goes back on a rally factor. But it's like, I mean, strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. He knew he had the upper hand and he got what he fucking wanted. And plus, everybody, all the other networks loved it. They loved rubbing that in Fox News. Like, hey, he's on our network and not on yours. It was great for their ratings. And But, I mean, that's the power. That's just one example. That I mean, the guy holds all the cards. Because the bottom line is when he's on a network, everybody tunes in. Everybody, everybody wants to know what the fuck is he going to say next. What is going to come out of his ne- mouth next. So it's very powerful. And so... When you've got multiple networks vying for your time, you hold all the cards because you have multiple offers. It is what we call a seller's market. And like in that case, Donald Trump is the seller. He's got lots of buyers. So it's a seller's market. He has his choice over who, what network he's going to be on and who's going to get to interview him and what the terms are going to be. Pretty powerful. And if you take that same kind of philosophy and, and apply it towards your dating life, it's amazing how well that works. So he, let's go through this guy's email. He says, hi, Corey. I just wanted to initially say thanks. I've worked my way through your book and I'm starting a second time now and I've noticed that you make a ton of very nuanced points which explains the need to reread it. Well, yeah, when you're on a date and a woman throws something at you, you're not going to be able to go – I know there's something on like page like 180 something about this. How do I you know? Let me go to the bathroom right now. Maybe I can look it up in the Kindle app, my phone. That's not going to work. You need to, That's why you need to know this stuff backwards and forwards. Repetition is the mother of skill. Because when you're on a date with a woman, you're not going to have time to sit there and flip through your, fo- your phone to find the answer in the book. But if you know the principles because you read it 10 to 15 times, I mean the answer just comes right out. And it seems natural. And you'll get the desired result without fucking things up. Just like Confucius said, success depends upon prior preparation. And without said preparation, there's sure to be failure. I appreciate the work you've put into this and the thought behind how much information is in there. The question I have is this. Have you ever been on a date with one girl and ran into another girl you're also dating? And if so, how do you handle those kinds of situations? Well, I wrote about one of them in the book. I was actually out. I was... And this was when I was really still – you know, I was, I was in the point where I was like putting everything together. I was literally in the last two to three months where like everything came together and I really got it. So I was dating this girl that I was really head over heels in love with. But I was still fucking up and sometimes I'd pursue too much. Sometimes I'd pursue not enough and I'd become very close friends with a couple of her brothers. And one night I was actually out with one of her brothers and we were going out to meet a, look for other girls, to meet other girls. And he knew I really loved and cared about his sister, but his sister was jerking me around, and it was really—I was—it's my fault because I'd done a lot of fucking up, and I let her jerk me around because I wasn't a very good negotiator in the beginning. I was still really trying to learn to find the sweet spot of how to apply pursuing too much versus not enough. Find just the perfect place in the middle to be where she would do most of the calling, texting, and pursuing. So I'm out with her brother one night and I wrote about this in the book and I literally – I run into this girl that I had dated like three or four years before and totally screwed up with and just badly to the point where she completely blew me off and ignored me. And so I'm with with this other girl's brother and we run into this girl and she just fucking looked amazing. I hadn't seen her in several years and it was – this girl at one time, it was like – it was love at first sight. But as soon as I looked in her eyes, I was like, this is the most beautiful woman on the planet. I literally – she was every bit as beautiful as Sidney Crawford. I mean she was that fucking hot. I was just – took my fucking breath away. And I hadn't seen her in three or four years and it's just – I mean I looking at her, talking to her, it was just like it all kind of came back. Even though I was totally in love with this guy's sister, even though I wasn't exclusive. We were just kind of casually dating. She was dating other guys. I was dating other women. 
And so we talked for a couple minutes and then I was like, well, hey, you have a great night. Nice seeing you again. I didn't ask her because I, you know, my attitude was, hey, you know what? I had screwed up with this girl before. She had blown me off. So therefore, she's got my contact info, even though it's been three or four years. If she really wanted to get in touch with me, she could find, she knows how to get in touch with me. And so we walked away and as we were like walking around the corner to take a left and go down the main, main street in downtown Orlando, I think it was going down to like Orange Avenue or like downtown Orlando at the time. He happened to look back and he says, dude, she was just standing there in the street just just dumbfounded look like I can't believe he just walked – he talked to me for a couple of minutes and just walked away like that. I thought I left her in mid-conversation. I was like, hey, well, we're going to – you know, we got an appointment. We're meeting some friends or whatever. You know, I'll see you girls later. Hey, it was nice seeing you again to, to the girl that I would seen. And then this was like a Friday night and sure enough, on Monday – I get an email from this particular girl. And on top of that, my buddy who I'm with, who was the brother of this other girl I'm dating, he's like, oh, Corey was talking to this really smoking hot girl. You wouldn't believe it. Oh, she was really beautiful. You know, So he's telling her these things to help me because he's on my side. He's an ally. He's trying to help, help me with his sister. And it actually helped. But that's not the best part of it. So I ended up going out with her I think like Thursday of that week. I think we went to like a business lunch at first, if I remember right. I wrote about it in the book. It was so many years ago at this point. So we went to this business lunch and we had a really good time. And then I think it was like the weekend – this was like a Thursday we go out. And then I think it was like the following Monday she gets in touch. And anyways, we make plans to meet up for drinks. And then – so we did. And it was like you know, literally – we met up for the second date, which was about two weeks after I ran into her when I was with this other girl's brother. And so, th- you know, it's helping f- get this other girl, his sister, off the fence about me. And so we're out. We went. We went to dinner, and we had such a good time. All we ended up doing was having drinks. We never got around to eating. And so I was like, "Well, let's go back to my place and we'll order some pizza." Because I had a full liquor bar. I had a, I had a total great, kick-ass bachelor pad set up. She's like, "Sure." So we're – and we're like, we'll take my car. And I had this you – know, this was back when I had my Red Lotus Esprit, my V8 twin turbo that I've talked about in the past. This badass, exotic-looking car. It was, it was the kind of car that was in like a lot of the older James Bond movies. It was in the – Richard Gere drove that Lotus and the movie Pretty Woman. Really kick-ass car. So it's, it's cold out. It's like I think around December. And so she's got this gorgeous black tight dress on. She looks fucking amazing. I'm all dressed up. And so we're walking and we're, we're like all over each other and, and she's holding my arm and, and we walk out and then who do we run into but the boss of the other girl that I was dating whose brother I always happen to be – I happen to be out with. And so she was out with her husband and we were talking for a few minutes. And we're like, well, we're going to get out of here. We're going back to my place. It's really cold out. And of course, I'm you know planting a seed in there. And I'm inside, I'm just like, I'm smiling. It's like, this is fucking great. First two weeks ago, I'm out with her brother. He tells her about this girl. And then every two weeks later, I, I literally run into her boss. So I know I'm going to get a phone call the next morning. And so, but I didn't care because, I, you know, I'm on a date with this particular girl. She looked fucking amazing. And she had, had was in the pro, had just broken up with her boyfriend like a week or two before. So it was like perfect timing just totally worked out so anyways we go back to my house have a great time I, you know you can read about it in the book you know the details uh, of what happened we had just had a, had a great evening back at my place and so next day i wake up kind of hung over it's like i don't know 10 30 in the morning i'm on my way to the office phone rings it's this other girl and i'm laughing and i'm like hello <laughs> and she's like hey <laughs> i'm just calling to see how your night and your evening went and i was like well it went great and then she says, well, I heard, I heard the girl you were with was really beautiful. I was like, yeah, she's fucking drop dead gorgeous. She looks like Cindy Crawford. And she says, yeah, so-and-so told me all about it. Said she was really beautiful. And I was like, yep, really, really cool girl. And she says, well, before you make any decisions, make sure you take into account all of your possibilities that you have and all the opportunities that you have. And so it really worked to her advantage. And then like a, a few days later, this particular girl, it's like when she went home that night or that, that morning, her boyfriend would literally was sitting on her doorstep and had been waiting the whole, the whole night for her while she was hanging out with me obviously. 
So she ended up getting back together with that guy. And she, later on, she ended up marrying him. And this other other girl that I was dating, like we got serious within like two or three weeks of that. And then it's just like everything fucking clicked. And it was just perfect how that all worked together. And it worked It worked to my advantage. I, I had been out. I know there was another time I remember when I was in my 20s. I, I was out on a date with a girl I was dating and I ran in and I was on a date with her and there was this other girl that I dated and totally screwed up with and she was there and it was amazing. She went from acting like I, she could have been less interested in me but as soon as she saw me with another girl, she was looking at her, she was looking at me. When the other girl would go to the bathroom, she'd come over and start talking to me and then when the, my date would come back, then she would kind of fade in the background. And then like the next week I was out and this other girl I had been dating was not with me and then she was all flirty and wanted to talk. It was just amazing. So if you're on a date, you know, for the guy that – well, let me, let me finish reading this particular guy's email. He says, the question is this. Have you ever been on a date with one girl and ran into another girl you're also dating? If so, how did you handle those kinds of situations? Well, I gave you one. He says, I live in a city that isn't huge and it's not outside the realm of possibility for this to happen. I haven't had this happen yet, but I would really be curious about what mindset or mentality to have in case the situation pops up. Thanks again for your book, your sight, and your input. It's totally changed how I looked at love, dating, and sex. Well, say you're out on a date and you're out on maybe a second or third date with a girl and then you run into another girl on the same date and you maybe been out with her two or three times. Just introduce it to them. Hey, this is so-and-so. This is so-and-so. What are you drinking? Let me get you a drink. Go to the bar, leave the two of them there by themselves and go and get the other one a drink and they'll figure it out. You don't have to say, oh, I was on a date with so-and-so. The other night. Women will create rapport on their own. They'll figure it out and then you can sit down and have a drink with both of them and by that, by the time you get back, they've already kind of created some rapport over a minute or two that, that they've been talking and they both can kind of realize that you obviously are, are dating or seeing both of them and at the end of the day you have to have a non-attached attitude you're okay with both of them getting pissed off at you and saying i don't want to see you anymore and you say hey no problem give me a call if you change your mind or one of them might say well i'm gonna leave great call me later nice seeing you nice seeing you and she may you know one of them may leave and say i can't believe you're on a date with another girl we were just having sex last night i was like hey you know we're just kind of casually seeing each other i didn't expect this to happen but it was like kind of nice that you both met she's like well i can't believe well we're here having a drink you're more than welcome to come back and join us if you like oh there's no way it's gonna happen okay call me change your mind and more than likely a few minutes later she'll call and say hey you know if you guys are still there i'm gonna head back okay no problem we'll be here waiting for you and then you can say, well, since you were hooking up with both of you, you say, hey, you girls want to get out here and go back to my place. You're already intimate with both of them. Why not? So the best way to handle it is you're okay with hooking up with both of them, with only one of them, or none of them. You have to be willing to lose both of them in order to get both of them. Because either way, it doesn't matter. Remember, what does Steve McQueen say? I live for myself and I answer to nobody. Doesn't mean you're a selfish jackass, but it was pretty well known that, you know, like with Steve McQueen's day, he was a womanizer. Even though he was married, he, I mean, he would, his wife would come to the set, like his first wife would come to the set, and here he is, he's got this hot younger girl on his arm, and here's his wife, mother, of, you know, all of his kids, and he's got this beautiful young girl. He's like, well, we're gonna go upstairs and you know to the room, and I'll see you later. And it's just that's who he was, and it was kind of like back in the '60s, it was like free love. And he just he didn't care if his, even if his wife was not approving of it. It's like that's who he was, and he let her know that that's who he was before they got married, and that's the way he showed up. And if you ever find yourself in this kind of a situation, it, let it work to your advantage, because your life is a drama-free zone. So either way, you could take it or leave it. You're cool with her sticking around. You're cool with her not sticking around. You're cool with having a threesome with both of them. You're cool with losing both of them forever and, and them not wanting anything to do with you. Either way, you're cool with it. But the bottom line is you're the king of your kingdom. You want what you want and which is a drama-free zone and you want both of them and you're not going to make a decision on choosing one versus the other. You want a woman or women that are cool with it either way. 
Because at the end of the day, if it's meant to be, if you're dating several women, eventually at some point you're going to find somebody who you like hanging out with more than everybody else you're dating. And what will happen is you'll start spending more and more time with that person and less and less time with the others and the others will just kind of fade out of the background. But if you're not at that place where you're ready to make that kind of decision, then you're cool with it either way. You don't owe any explanation to anybody. That You're not committed to them. They're not committed to you. But by being non-attached and giving them the option that you're cool with however they react to it as long as they're not bringing any drama into your life, but you still want them to be around, you still want them to be in your life, nine times out of ten, you'll get them both. That's something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions for booking whichever option works best for you. And I will talk to you soon.